What makes the Radical Monarchs different from other girls groups is that our foundation is social justice and we focus on issues that specifically affect young women of color. We are here on behalf of the Radical Monarchs in support of Protect Oakland Renters because families, including mine, that grew up here in Oakland will be kicked out because we won't be able to afford to pay rent here in Oakland. There is a group of girls in California. They range in age from 8 to 11 years old. We think they're being exploited. Why does the world need to be more radical? Radical means to me out of the box, edgy, like swimming against the current. Hi. For me, it means like fierce, strong, powerful. We're gonna teach you how to stomp on the attacker's foot. We're gonna imagine somebody's behind, behind me, right? And I don't wanna hit, no. No! No! no. So you keep stomping no. and then until no. you start getting it, because trust me, it will break their feet. I want us to talk a little bit more about what disability justice is. How many people know at least one person with a disability? People with disabilities are oftentimes thought of like as the people who can do the littlest out of everybody. Like, oh, what can that person with an intellectual disability do? Or what can that blind guy do? We call it transphobia. And so transphobia is when people make fun of trans people and trans women in particular and trans men um, because they think that they're not being the right gender. So for myself, I've gotten people making fun of me or laughing at me or questioning like, is that a boy, is that a girl? In a mean way. And so I think that all of us, we all have a responsibility. So think about what is your role, right? Because we all have a role. This group really came together with my daughter last year, was in fourth grade, and a lot of her friends in school were joining a local Girl Scouts troop. And uh, she really wanted to join, naturally all her friends are joining. But my mom wasn't really sure about it because my other really close friend, her name is Diani, and Diani was the only girl of color in the Girl Scout troop. And so her mom and my mom decided that, oh, maybe we should like, we should, we should like do something for like our girls and stuff. Oh, put, Albums. Just put the mix because that one's always good. Put it on blast. <laughs> and so when I started to look at what that troop would look like, the one that she wanted to join, I was just like, you know, like I just don't feel like this is going to speak to you and your experience. It's, it's like a rosca, it's like a peanut butter, like it's like a... It's so a kind of dream about what would a troop like that look like beyond service learning or volunteering? What does it look like to actually be radical and to actually stand up for something? Where she could build sisterhood with other young girls like her and, and have those connections. Because I made those connections, but I made them much later. And so... I thought about what would it look like for an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, 10-year-old to make those connections at such a younger age, rather than have to wait for college, you know, which is what happened kind of to me. All right, Monarchs, we're gonna get started. If I can have you come and take a seat, please. We have been in which unit? Which unit are we in right now? Who can tell me what this unit is called? Anyone remember what this unit is called? Yes. Um, Radical Roots. Radical Roots, awesome. So the units we do are done out of a combination of two things. One, we ask the girls, like, what do you want to learn about? What do you want to do? What kind of activities do you want to do together? And also just looking at what are social justice issues that we know impact their lives as young girls of color. So why do we think it's important to learn about these movements or to learn about these leaders. Maya? People without knowledge of their history is like a tree with no roots. Right, ooh, that's so good. So people without knowledge of their history are like a tree without roots, right? And this unit is called? We're all t we are talking about our roots, right? Our histories, our her stories, right? So if we don't know what our her stories are, then 
It's like we don't have roots. And why is it important for us to have roots, Diani? It shows how we are unique. And if everybody was the same, the world would be so weird, you yes. know? Everybody deserves to have like their own unique style. Very good, Amia. Because then we can try to keep what um, is in our culture alive. Right, good point. Maya? So we know what our family members have been through and we try to like make it better for the future generations. Right, right, right. That's great, that's awesome. <laughs> The reason that we have a separate girls group as opposed to joining the existing ones is because we didn't see anyone that talked about social justice and also talk about young women of color's experiences explicitly, like specifically address them as opposed to doing a general girl culture, all girls experience this. And that's also important to have that and it is important to have this. When I first heard about the Radical Monarchs, I was excited. I knew it was going to be different because it's social justice compared to talking about Girl Scouts and selling cookies and money and stuff. I knew that we were going to be especially talking about race, like Black Lives Matter. I really wanted to join because instead of being on your phone and doing other things, you get to learn cool stuff about your culture. Diani was absolutely interested. She kind of told me more about what the girls were going to be learning and how powerful it was. And it happened at a time where we absolutely have to get our girls in something where they can not only feel important and feel beautiful and feel radical, you know, just to feel that, but they also needed to be somewhere where they understood what was going on in the world around them and their place in their world and their place in their community. So what's the purpose of a march? Why do people march when there's an issue or they feel some kind of way about an injustice? Why do people march? Maya. Not to approve a point, but to be heard. Because a lot of people to be don't heard. speak up for themselves. Exactly. And those who are dead and they can't because they're d deceased, that um, people stand up for them. Very exactly. Good. Because an issue affects you, it doesn't mean everybody knows about it. So it's really important to create awareness. Our first unit was Black Lives Matter, and that was a unit that was unscripted, it wasn't planned. Hands up, don't shoot. But we launched in December at a time where there's a lot of media attention around the Michael Brown incident and the Eric Garner incident. And so we felt like we needed to respond and have that conversation, have that actually be a unit. And that was our first unit. Our second unit was called Radical Beauty, and that was all about what does it mean to be radically beautiful as young girls of color? What does it mean to embrace our beauty, our skin tone, our body size, our body differences as young girls of color, to love ourselves? Our third unit was around environmental justice, and we are currently beginning our unit on pride. The topics are endless, like it's endless. It's, it's really just a matter of like squeezing, like how much do we do? Because I feel like there's so many things to go over and there's so many things that they want to do together. One, two, three, red <laughs> Well, there's a new brownie troop in California and these girls aren't selling cookies or learning to sew. Now here's what they are being taught. White policemen are killing black young folks, such as women, men, and children. Now, we blurred these little girls' faces because we think they're being exploited. So how irresponsible is it of the leaders of this troop to be teaching these young girls, really indoctrinating their thought? Some people have not been supportive of what we're doing because, one, they don't understand the need. Why would you only focus on young women of color? Why not all girls? Why is there a need to be separate? And two, they think that uh, what we're doing is not age appropriate. Like, oh, that's a big topic to talk about. Black Lives Matter or environmental racism or those are things that adults can feel uncomfortable talking about. There's a lot of rampant injustice happening and we have to teach young people how to achieve social justice and build community. Wouldn't it be better for them to join a brownie troop and learn leadership skills, learn friendship skills, learn how to sew maybe, survival skills? That would be, to me, more useful than raising little racists. That's what this is. Would you want your kids being a part of a group like that? Young people are indoctrinated constantly, every day, by media, by images, by the news. There's messages all around us. I think that this is not about indoctrinating young girls, but this is about 
opening their lens to see things a different way. Where do we get these ideas that a young man in a hoodie is inherently up to something bad? Where does that come from, right? So I think we're asking the questions to the girls that they don't get in mainstream life. I'm very comfortable telling white folks that they have their own, that they are the standard. They are the standard of, quote, beauty. They set the standards in, quote, our education. They set the standards in, in everything in our community, whether it's the political process, whether it's how we're teaching our kids. And so that's a huge injustice. And so when we create spaces for these young women, it's about addressing the standard. It's not about excluding anyone. It's about recognizing the injustice of these young women not having that space. It's a detriment to these young women. Helping them to develop their own voices is really important to me. I mean, I think that so many of our kids feel invisible. And I think that this is a place for them to not feel invisible and to really develop into believing that they have a place here and a voice that needs to be heard. Radical Monarchs gives her a sisterhood. How incredible is it to be with girls who look like you? with some of the same experiences as you, who can really understand um, injustice on a deeper way because they've experienced it or because their family members have experienced it. Because of that, their focus is on making a change in the world. And so I want her to change the world, and I want her to do it in a radical way. What I've learned is it's all about justice, like justice for people who are different, justice for people who are in danger because they're different, just it's all about justice and equal rights. And that's something that I've really been part of and learned a lot about. So today, as you guys know, we're gonna be doing the Black Panther Party Tour. Can anyone tell me who are the Black Panthers? What did they do? Solina? They're a group um, with Black Berets. Mm -hmm. And they, they help kids, and they help around the communities in Oakland. Very good, awesome. And so the Black Panther Party really came about in this way of like self-defense for their community because their community was being attacked by the police. Does this still happen today? Mm -hmm. We still see this happening a lot today, right? So is this still kind of relevant? So think about our journal question yesterday, why is it important to stand up for yourself and others? That's a part of standing up for yourself. For them, that was how they were showing, how they were standing up for their community. Everybody stop over here and look in the window. Don't block the door. Circle up here, please, circle up. So this, before it was a bakery, originally it was the first office of the Black Panther Party. Why do you think they needed an office? To plan stuff. To plan stuff and meet, those are really important things. And to show visibility in the community. And you can see on the wall, there's different newspapers and information about them. And why do you all think they, that the Black Panthers wanted to make their own newspaper? If there was like another newspaper and they had their writing on it, like, many, like not many people would read it. But if there was a big newspaper with only the Black Panthers, people would get more interested and they would probably read it more. Good, to show that they're capable, that they can do their own newspaper. So there was a lot of power in the, in the Black Panthers having their own newspaper where they can tell their own stories in their own words. This group was definitely super informed by movements like the Black Panther movement, the Brown Beret, the Young Lords. All those movements were movements that were based in self-determination. They were rooted in empowerment. They were rooted in claiming that black is beautiful, brown is beautiful at a time where folks were told that's not beautiful, it's ugly, it's, it's dark, it's, you know, it's, it's bad. And so I think that, that is what really uh, draws us to being able to use that as a form of inspiration. So you see how there's stop lights all over this area? Yeah. So when the Black Panthers first started, they are very much a community group that wanted to stick up for the community and themselves. And so one way that they did that is to demand that the city of Oakland put in stop lights and also signage so that people stop for children. We wanted them to know about their history, however sorted it is or not, we wanted them to know and not, you know, not be subject to if someone says, oh, the Black Panthers were like evil, they're horrible, we wanted them to be able to critically think about that and it's like, okay, is that the whole story? Who's telling that story? Whose perspective is that story from? <laughs> This 
is Cheryl Dawson. Can we say hi, Miss Cheryl? Hi, hi Miss Cheryl. Hello. <laughs> so what I want to say to you all first is I never thought that when I was doing the work for the people that one day, much later, when I was a grandmother, that folks would ask me about the work. And it does my heart a great deal of good to know that you want to know about the work because the work was important. I began to serve the people in the community of West Berkeley. So we would make pancakes or oatmeal or cream of wheat or grits, or bacon, every school morning for the children. And many of the children were hungry because they had no way to have a breakfast were we not there to give it to them. It was such a moving experience to make a meal for children who didn't have it, to wash their little faces off when they were through, to put the little lotion on their face so they wouldn't be ashy, smooth their hair back so they would be kept, and then whisper in their ear, today is your day. This is your day. You may use it to your best advantage and make a change for yourself, make a change for your family and make a change for your community. Yes. Um, what were some challenges you had and what was something you succeeded on? My challenges were of the sheer volume or magnitude of the work. It was very difficult. And it was um, difficult being under surveillance all the time, being followed all the time by the police. It takes a certain amount of commitment to be able to stand up under that pressure. Be sure. Yes? Then, um, was it worse with police brutality than it is right now? No. We've same. gone backwards. We, it was worse, and then the Black Panthers came, and then we had a lot of other civil rights work, and it got better, and now it's worse. It went back. It crashed and burned. That's why it's so important, you know, that you all understand what's at stake. The situation for black people and for brown people is worse than I've ever known it in my lifetime. It's my desire to plant seeds in the hearts of those who will take them so that you will know as you grow up and you assume your place in womanhood that part of your responsibility is to the people. It's wonderful that you have a chance to sit here and learn history, but for every one of you who are sitting here, there are 50 or 100 that don't have this opportunity. So you have big work ahead of you. We stand in the legacy of love and social justice that our ancestors and contemporaries are fighting for. The reason I can read is because someone risked their life so that I had the right to read. So we have to teach young people to follow in that tradition, to continue working towards social equality and social justice. Can we get uh, the ones at the end, can we get your fists up, please? Okay, wait, because I'm crying. Just a second. Just oh. hold it. Hold it first and get myself together. Just give me one minute. Okay, let's go. The things that we learn in Radical Monarchs are very cool and very important in our lives. I found out that doing activities based on social justice is really cool. And I get to show people who we are and that we're proud of it. And we're basically a mini tiny group of um, social justice leaders. So my dream for the Radical Monarchs would be that there'll be like troops like in a lot of places. Like I want it to like to spread out because the more troops we get, the more power it will get to make Oakland and actually the world now a better place. Well, I should say around a more radical place. Something about social justice that is fun is that we get to work with it. We get to be part of it. We get to kind of make history, or her story, as we like to say it. Instead of just reading about it, we get to be one tiny little part of it. Because 
a lot of tiny parts can equal one big part, but we need the tiny parts first to make it one big part. We are the